All right, uh, we'll get that in a second. Okay, come back. All right. Um, Y'all, yeah, I want to talk about relative minimum and maximum here for one second. Um, what this means is, this is not a point. This is an interval where there's some x value, one x value to the next x value, that there's some x between these two points such that there is a minimum value compared to all the other values. That's what this is saying. And also, if there's a minimum, there's also a what? Maximum. Maximum. So like, this is the math way to say, but here's a way to look at this particular problem, what we're looking at. If you look right here, if you look at this graph, technically, the minimum is negative infinity, and the maximum is what? Positive infinity. But we have what we call relative minimums and relative maximums. And you hear like, it goes up and it turns, it comes back down. It goes from increasing to decreasing here, right? Well, that was a relative maximum because in that relative area, that's the maximum value, correct? And also here's a relative what? Minimum. Minimum. And here's another relative maximum in that area and another relative minimum. So you can have more than one relative maximum or minimum. You may have none. All right, those are the things. Or, I also want to mention this one. In the real world, if we were doing supplies, can you have negative supplies? This might be a math solution to a problem, yet the real world answer might only be what? That one right there because it's in quadrant one where you have what? Positive slot and values and such. Okay? That might be the type of stuff like you might have with it. So here's how we're going to do this. So approximating a relative maximum minimum. What I want everyone to do is this. Go to this right here and hit the y equals. And what happened to my stuff that went away? I need it. Oh man, I hit that. Is it even recording? I don't know what, what, you know, it happened last time it recorded, right? Mm -hmm. After a certain point, like, it, it went off. Yes. Huh? So keep, keep that going, but I need to do this here. I need to, um, hey, type this in, y'all. Type this in right there. I'm going to kind of put, F of X. I'm going to put that right there. Yeah, the, the, the F of X right here. And I'm going to pull up something that I need. Let me see if this is still working. Okay, it's still working, so I don't know why it, um, what happened to my little stuff. So as long as it's still working, well, I'm in the computer mode with it, so that's good. Here's what I'm doing with this here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you how to find this particular answer. Now I'm going to say this right here. See this? So here, go to your calculator. So everybody type in y equals 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. Um, is that is this still showing up on the screen on on that camera? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to make sure I get this. I'm going to do second plus seven one two. You might need to do that because I don't know what graph they were on in the previous class. So make sure you do that. And let's go to your y equals. Unless I'm going to hit, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go three x. Now y'all. I can hit this button. I'm going to do it. Now you can hit square, and then a two will pop in there automatically. I'm going to do it this way this time so that you can see that you can do it in case it's not squared. But make sure when you do that, you have to what? Arrow out of it or everything's still in the exponent. Got it? And then I'm going to hit the minus 4x minus 2. And I'm going to hit graph. My graph is right there. And it will graph that for me. Now, this one here, I think I zoomed in a little bit. Kind of make it a little easier. I can definitely work it right here. But just because I'm a teacher, I'm going to actually hit my zoom. And I'm going to go option two and have to zoom in a little bit on some enter. And it will still have the graph. I guess it went too far. I guess it won't work. It went just a little below what I needed. So I'm going to go back and hit zoom again. and go back to 6, standard. There we go. Because I need this little hill right here for that to work, all right? Or I think you could go to your x minimum, x maximum, and type those values in. Might even be a little bit better. And I will show you that. We do that on the window. I'm also showing people how to like do this here. So on my x minimum, I'm going to put this negative 4. I'm going to arrow down like that. My x maximum is going to make 4. I'm going to leave my x scale 1. 
my y minimum, I'm going to go ahead and make negative 6. I use that, not the minus 6, for it to work. If I hit the minus, it won't work. And I'm going to put y4 for my max. And now I'm going to hit graph, because that will actually match that window a little better and just make this a little easier. Just You don't have to do that, but it makes this a much nicer, easier thing to see. All right? I could have left it on the regular one, but I wanted to show those zooms in and out. Now, here's what I'm going to do next. All right? And I kind of want to slide this over a little bit. So I'm going to slide down to, I think, uh-oh, that slide right there. Bring my little thing right back. Okay? I have a lot of different things on here so that we can see it. There we go. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do now is this. I'm going to hit second calculator, second trace, that right there. Now, is this a minimum or a maximum? Because it's going to load. It's a, it's a minimum. So I want to hit option three. I'm going to hit this three right here. And notice this little flashy thing right there. I can arrow it left or right. I want it to be left of the minimum. Notice, is it flashing left of that minimum? Is it flashing left of the minimum? Yeah. So I'm going to hit enter. And what that does is it locks the left boundary in. It no longer says left bound, now it says what? Right, right bound. So I want an arrow right of it. Right bound. Now, am I right of the minimum? I have to be right of that hump, okay? And once I'm right of it, anywhere right of it, I can hit enter, and that locks it in place. And then I'm going to hit enter one more time, and that gave me this number right here. Notice, this is what I did it before with a different calculator. Are the numbers exactly the same? No. No, but are they pretty what? Close. Close. Now notice, negative 3.33333 is like negative 3 and a third which is negative what? Ten-thirds. And later on, we're going to learn how to find the exact number, like fraction-wise, with this here. You know, if possible. Now, right now, it's about a month away. This is just an estimate. The calculator only gives an estimate. And notice this 66666. Well, if you have a whole bunch, what's point sixes repeating? It's what? Uh, Two-thirds. Now, notice, you get a bunch of point sixes. You can round these to fractions. Now, I... I'm not going to be too upset. If you just round like 0.67, I'm okay with that right now. But obviously, when you do this for calculator, you're not going to get a what? The exact answer with this, all right? So I kind of wanted to show, um, like right here, 